Thank you so much for joining today. Welcome to Unlock the Zone with Onyx Backcountry. Um, today we're joined by Josh Kling, um, who's a San Juan Backcountry guide and author of the um, the Beacon Guidebook for the Silverton area. So I am incredibly stoked to be joined by you, Josh, and I can't wait to talk about Silverton, one of my favorite places on earth. So Brad, um, thanks for having me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited for this one. So um, me, I'm Matt Madick. Um, I am a vertical marketing manager on the backcountry team here at Onyx. Um, I have been snowboarding for a long time, made the switch to split boarding, and I just fell in love with it. You know, it really took something I've loved my whole life to the next level, um, getting on the split board and using it to climb mountains, descend mountains. Um, it's really opened up a whole world for me. Um, this picture of me is actually on uh, Red Mountain, on Red Mountain Pass. Um, and yeah, my Silverton story is um, when I was very green uh, in the backcountry skiing world, I was drawn to the San Juans by uh, the Silverton Split Fest. I had just gotten my split board in my airy class and I was like, oh, I want to check this out. What's a split fest? So I showed up in town and I was very underprepared in terms of planning. Um, and I actually purchased Josh's book while I was there. And that was kind of my first experience going from like, being the follower, like listening to other people's beta, going off people who had more experience to being the trip leader and like planning tours and everything. So Josh, thank you for all the beta. <laughs> and Josh, if you want to give a little intro to yourself, that would be awesome. Rad. So I know a couple of folks in the audience, but hey, my name is Josh Kling. I'm an IFMGA guide out of Durango. And I guide for Salmon Expeditions, which is Silverton's only year-round guide service. They do a full spectrum of programming. Um, but I also am the coordinator of permitting and programming at Fort Lewis College. I teach AVI courses for both the American Institute for AVI Research and Education, which is ARI, as well as the American Avalanche Institute. Um, and I'm the Beacon Guidebooks author of the Silverton Guidebook, which was the second book they put out. This is great. You're the, the perfect person to walk us through the San Juan zones and how to navigate it safely. Um, so what's on the docket? Um, first, I'm going to go over a little bit about Onyx um, and what Onyx Backcountry is, where we came from, and kind of what we stand for, as well as going through like a handful of the um, features in the app and, and getting you oriented on like what the different buttons do if you haven't been into the app very much. Um, then we're going to check in on conditions. And we're going to kind of establish and create a tour plan based on those conditions. Um, and then we're going to have a section where um, we show you like the three steps you need to do before taking your thing in the field to make um, your mobile device all set up and ready to go for your tour. And then after that, we'll be having a QA and a um, as well as a giveaway at the end of the presentation. So if you have questions, um, make sure you're popping them in the chat, the Q&A section above. And, um, you know, we'll answer some of them in the chat and some of them live here. So. All right, so um, as a perk for this masterclass, um, attendees can save 20% if you scan this QR code right here and go to the landing page that we have set up. Um, there's also a trial in there as well. If you um, have yet to try Onyx Backcountry and you just wanna see what it's all about. And um, and yeah, within there, it's, it's really good to kind of get the app downloaded and get an account created. Um, that way you can kind of follow along with us as we're going through here. So I'll give you one second to scan this. And then also, um, I wanted to give a plug for San Juan Expeditions. Um, so yeah, like a great dedicated year-round guided service headquartered in Silverton. Um, so Josh, yeah, do you, anything else you want to plug for, for uh, San Juan Expeditions? Yeah, it's, it's Silverton's only year-round guide service. They do a full spectrum of programming in the winter, um, custom ski guiding, AVI courses that range from rescue courses and ASOS, which are Avalanche Skills Advancement Workshops to Rec 1 and Rec 2 airy courses, the ski guiding, ice climbing, alpine guiding, and then in the summer, the full spectrum of rock climbing, peak bagging. A lot of that's in the Weminuch Wilderness, which is Colorado's largest wilderness, on um, stuff like Wham Ridge, or Vestal Peak, or Jagged Peak, but then elsewhere, Black Canyon, stuff in the Northwest, and SJE is connected to Aspen Expedition, so full spectrum of guiding in the Aspen Zone as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's my zone. It's cool. I didn't know you guys were doing trips in the Black Canyon as well. So we should probably meet in the middle for, for some experience. <laughs> yeah, uh, a bunch of trips in the Black over the years. Yeah, that's awesome. 
um, yeah, so this QR code um, will bring you to them. So make sure you support them as well. Um, here's some awesome photos of the team. Is that turkey shoot in the middle? Nice. That is turkey shoot in the middle. <laughs> That's great. Um, cool. So yeah, I just wanted to go over a little bit about Onyx, like where we came from. Um, so Onyx has actually been around since 2009. Um, it started as a hunting company um, where there was a, um, a chip that was inserted into like Garmin devices that would overlay specifically like private land layers and other information that's really relevant to hunters. Um, and as technology of phones advanced, um, we launched a mobile app for the hunting app as well. Um, so, you know, kind of reducing the need to use another device um, and using the phone that all of us carry. Um, and once we built those awesome maps, we said, well, what else can we do with it? So in 2019, we launched Onyx Off-Road. Um, this app is designed to help off-roaders and snowmobilers find um, off-road trails, navigate on them, and um, make sure that they're staying, you know, where they're supposed to be and off of private land. Um, and there's a lot of incredible off-roading trails in the San Juans that I could talk for hours about too. <laughs> um, and then in 2021, we launched Onyx Backcountry. Um, we really saw a need for, um, you know, a map this detailed and advanced for the human powered user, um, backcountry skiers, hikers, backpackers, peak baggers, um, mountain bikers. So the, you know, the goal with this app is to give um, information, um, especially for the backcountry ski audience that you can use in the field that will help you make safe decisions that something like, you know, a more general app um, isn't so strong at. So, um, you know, Onyx Backcountry at a glance, we're multi-season. Um, we have a trail and a snow mode that I'll be showing you a little bit later. Um, we have a ton of trails in the app, um, a ton of trail routes and adventures. Uh, we just integrated 11 um, digital guidebooks from Beacon Guidebooks in the app, such as the Silverton map, um, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, all of our maps work offline, so they can go with you when you are far from cell service and you are off the grid, which all of us like to spend a lot of time off there. Um, you can also see color-coded public land ownership. So seeing like, is this BLM land? Is this wilderness areas? Is this national forest? Uh, is this private land? You can see all that within the app and know exactly like what type of land you're standing on. We also have a ton of like customizable map markup tools. Um, we have 70 waypoint icons. Um, we have slope angle and slope aspect layers to show you shading on those and kind of like where you know, the slope angles and the slope aspects of different things you're looking at are. And we've also been working to integrate like some dynamic information as well. So um, snow conditions, we have snow tell stations in the app. Um, we have uh, weather in the app. And then we also have avalanche forecasts as well that'll update based on the conditions um, as they come over from CIC and the rest of the avalanche centers. Um, we also have GPS tracking. So even if you're offline, um, you'll have a little blue dot that will follow you around and show exactly where you are located on your map, um, even when you're out of cell service. And we're continually working on building tools that like, you know, help you plan routes, help you know what you're getting yourself into, and also really importantly, helping you share that information with everybody that you're going out with so you're all on the same page. Um, and what makes us different? Um, so because we've been around for a while and we've had so much, you know, um, so much built into the product from the uh, hunt and the off-road side, um, we're really focused on reliability, creating a map that you can trust that won't freeze or bug out or, you know, crash on you when you need it the most. Um, we have been really focused on usability and creating a really intuitive experience. Um, so you're not fumbling around looking for what different buttons do and, and, you know, what information you need at your fingertips. Um, content. This has been a huge push, especially with this Beacon Guidebook content, is curating the content and being very selective of what we put in the app. Um, what we don't want to do is put up lines in our app and have people say that is uh, a very poor choice in line. So like going with like really reputable sources like Beacon Guidebooks has proven to be really effective and, and really um, important for us. Um, privacy. This is something we take really seriously, especially from the hunting background. Um, we have sharing and it's only one-to-one -one sharing. So when you share your tracks with your friends, um, they're the only ones who can see them. Um, we're not doing like heat maps or anything like that. And then you, we actually have tools in the app as well. Like if you share with your friend and then you're no longer friends after the tour, you can actually remove the beta that you sent them, which is kind of cool. 
Um, and then we're also very purpose driven. We are committed to access and stewardship, um, you know, making sure that people can get out and experience things responsibly, respectfully. Um, and also we're committed to supporting avalanche forecasting awareness and research. So we're continually looking for ways to, you know, get avalanche information in front of everybody with no excuses um, and integrating as much as we can with avalanche centers to keep people safe and, and really just pushing pushing their information to everybody as best we can. All right, so this next section, I'm gonna go into a quick demo um, of the Onyx Backcountry app. So if you log into Onyx Backcountry, you may see something like this for the first time, right? So, um, you know, one of the ways I first like to explore is kind of just going to your zone, right? So we're gonna go over to Silverton and that's gonna be the place we're gonna focus today. So there's Montrose. So as you start like zooming into an area, you'll start to see these trails emerge. So this is in summer mode. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on here. This is uh, our trail mode, but you can see like, as you start zooming in, you know, our user interface is gonna start giving you information that it thinks is relevant as you're at a different zoom level. Um, and when you're in here too, like you can start seeing those color coded, um, the land information that I was talking about earlier. So like this yellow is like BLM, like these dashed lines right here, are all wilderness areas. The green is national forest. So this is kind of a good way, like at a glance, just to be like, okay, where are our public lands? Um, and then when you're in here, there's a handful of other things I won't go too deep into, but um, these are a handful of layers for the summer that we've curated for here. So we have an, an active wildfire layer. You know, unfortunately these become, these have become more and more common. So knowing exactly where these wildfires are burning and what it will impact, especially when you're, you know, in the back country, um, is a really important thing to have. So we have active wildfires, we have historic wildfires, and this one's really significant. Like if you're looking in an area that has been burned a couple of years back and you almost forgot that it existed, like this will let you know, like, Hey, there could be a ton of down timber on the trails. Um, there could, this could be a whole like scorched mountain that I'm trying to climb. Um, we have air quality layers. So as the smoke plumes move around, um, you can actually see what the air quality index is in the summer. Um, smoke forecast, this kind of shows you where the smoke is moving. And then um, we actually just launched this week um, using the private land data that we've had in the hunting app for, the, for a long time. So we have a private land layer here as well. So this is part of our um, elite subscription. So it's, it's a different than the, the premium subscription, but um, we go into Silverton. We can even go into town. You can see landowner information for every piece of land. So who owns whatever you're looking at, whether that be a mining claim, a bar, uh, you know, an Airbnb, <laughs> you can see it. And here's like on Kendall Mountain, like you can see all these different mining claims that kind of carve up the landscape. So this has been really enlightening to me. It's kind of changed the way I've looked at the world um, because everything kind of has an owner and a stake. And it's kind of important to see who owns what and where those lines are so you can, you know, avoid trespassing and, and all that. So um, I'll just go back one more time just to show you like how to switch into snow mode. So now that we are here, um, if you go up here, you can click this and then you can toggle into snow mode. And what that'll do is it kind of reshapes the map for a winter mode. Um, what it'll do is it'll change the satellite imagery into from dirt in the, in the summer to snowy peaks. So it helps you visualize like couloirs and backcountry ski terrain. Um, and then it also changes the activity type. So instead of hiking trails, it'll showcase, um, you know, we have ski touring routes, we have cross country skiing trails and we have snowshoe routes. So you can turn those off and on by clicking this. Or if you're just trying to find cross country ski trails, you can select those independently and move around and find those as well. We have avalanche forecast. So you click this layer on right here. You zoom out a little bit, it'll give you a better idea of what we're looking at. So this shows you the avalanche um, danger, not just in Colorado, but um, across the West. I gotta zoom in just a little bit more to get that to pop back on. Here it is. And also starting to extend into Canada, we have the avalanche reports. Um, San Juan's look like they're the hot spot right now, huh? Um, see, I'll go in a little bit more. So we can see our slope angle layer. So this is our slope angle layer. Um, you can see the steepness of the slope and it kind of color codes it. So um, 
the legend for what the colors mean is up here. So green is 20 to 25, yellow is 25 to 30, orange is 30 to 35, and so on. The darker it gets, the steeper the train. And um, you can also change the opacity on desktop. So if you like seeing the train underneath, um, this is especially useful when you're in like a satellite view. Um, so you can see like the rocks and the trees and stuff like that. So you can actually change the opacity so it's not just blinding you with the rainbow colors. And then similar to slope angle, we have slope aspect, um, which will show you the cardinal facing direction of the slope that you um, may or may not be skiing on. So um, to look for the legend, this compass right over here actually turns into the legend. So you can see like dark blue is north facing, um, you know, east facing is like a green, south facing is um, like an orange, um, and west facing is the red. So kind of just gives you that right there in your compass if you're ever curious as to what the colors actually mean. And then I'm going to turn these off. Sweet. The next thing I want to showcase is um, our search bar. So if you already know where you want to go, like let's say you're looking at like Commodore or something. Um, bad spelling, but like you can, you know, if you're looking for like a city, um, you know, if you're like, I'm going to Moab and I just want to like zoom over to that area. If you're going to Silverton, you want to zoom to that area, you can do that. If you want to search for a trailhead, you can do that. Um, if you want to search for like a, 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 you know, like a national forest campsite, um, like a campground, like you can search for that. Like if there's a waypoint, uh, if there's like a, a card for it, we can put it in there. Um, and then the lines are in here as well. Um, and you can also put like, if you're looking for like a specific GPS coordinate, like if you have the latitude and longitude, you can put it in this thing as well, and it'll send you right there. Um, so like, you know, this will send us over to a line that we know near and dear to our hearts. Um, hold on, I'm gonna turn this off because it's disorienting me. Sweet. So that's like, that's one of the places I like to go if I'm, um, if I'm, if I know specifically where I'm going. And if you'd like to look at the, um, the guidebooks in the app, um, over here on this left-hand side, there's this discover button. And when you're in snow mode, this will open up the discover tab, which will show you all of the um, beacon guidebooks that we have in the app. So we have Silverton, we have Crested Butte, Buffalo Pass, Loveland Pass, Berthoud Pass, Cameron Pass, Rocky Mountain National Park. And then over in Washington, we have Crystal Mountain, um, Washington's East Side, Snoqualmie, Mount Baker, and Olympic National Park. So for one of the things that I think we really focused on um, was taking the guidebook experience and adding like the dynamic content with it as well. So like you can see front and center, we're putting the avalanche forecast right here, um, as well as the current snow depth from snow tell stations and the 24 hour um, snow accumulation, um, just to give you some dynamic information, like right at your fingertips. Um, like, especially like if you're looking at like, should I go to Loveland Pass or Berthoud Pass? Like that could give you an indicator like, okay, more snow fell over here last night or hey, the avalanche da danger is higher on Berthoud versus Loveland. So if you have the option between two of these zones, it's nice to kind of see that at a glance. Um, once you click into a region, it'll send your map over there. And, um, you know, we've really just tried to like integrate the guidebook as best as we can. So, um, you know, once you're here, this is your region and, you know, you're like, okay, Silverton, there's a lot of area to cover here. So how do we figure it out? Um, it starts with an overview. This actually comes from the book. So, um, you know, this is a lot of context about Silverton, the history, um, some disclaimers, et cetera. And then, you know, again, we're seeing the avalanche forecast here. So this area actually has two different zones um, within the Silverton zone that CIC forecast. So you can toggle between them here. Um, both of them are um, actually the same pretty much right now, um, but that's like the North and South, like North of Silverton. Let's see if I can zoom out, show it, did I turn that off? Maybe. Yeah. I think they're kind of like all one polygon right now. <laughs> There's a line in there somewhere. Um, so yeah, and like once you go here, you can click through and this link will actually bring you to CIC's website um, where you can read the full report, get all the information that they provide um, and really just hone in on the, you know, the metrics that they provide. Um, we also integrate these snow tell stations. So 
Um, same situation. Um, there's a bunch of snowtail stations in the San Juans. Um, so once you're here, you can see like Mollus Lake zone over here. You can go to Spud Mountain um, or Red Mountain Pass, whatever's more applicable to um, where you're going. And like you can see these snowflake icons on the map. These are actually all of the snowtail stations and where they're located. Um, so yeah. And then after that, it's just like looking at zones. So where am I going to ski? Um, and as you're looking at the different zones, it'll highlight them on the map. So you can see them turning green as I'm kind of hovering over them. I'm going to go into this section. So you have stuff like Cemetery, um, Chattanooga East, Chattanooga North. And one interesting thing, too, we pulled in with the Beacon Guidebooks is this eights, like eights kind of like notification here. So um, eight stands for Avalanche Train Exposure Scale. And this is a very like simplified way of saying like, is this area um, complex in terms of the avalanche um, problems that you may experience based on the train, or is it more simple? So, um, you know, we have simple or with complex challenging. Um, is there any simple terrain? Oh, here it is. Coal Creek is simple. So this is, it's kind of like a way to say like, it's, it's kind of a way to help you easily identify like, you know, what stuff is really big and complex and will have a lot of decisions that you need to make in a field versus ones that are more simple. Um, and you will probably only have to factor a, a handful of decisions like, you know, hey, there's nothing above us that could slide um, or there's no, you know, different aspects we have to worry about. Like, whereas I don't I actually haven't ridden Coal Creek, so I don't want to call it a uh, mini golf course, but that's sometimes what we see in the app is um, like more simple terrain, more like meadowy, low angle stuff um, that doesn't have towering peaks behind it that could wipe you out, even if you're on low angle terrain. Um, so I'm going to look at, let's look at Kendall Mountain because it's awesome and towers over this sweet town. So once you're into, um, once you're in this different zone, you're going to have a couple options. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, this will work. So you have a couple options here. Kendall Mountain only ha actually has kind of less than some of the other zones because um, there could be multiple approaches and multiple descents in some of these areas. So as you scroll down here, um, you can see some more context about this different line. It'll tell you what aspects it's primarily on. Um, there's a lot more context in here that come from the book. So there's a lot of other information. There's information on arrival, like where should I park? Where should I go? Like, how do I get there? How do I not get, you know, knocked off the side of Red Mountain Pass by one of the plows? Um, so that is a really important thing for me when I'm looking at back of tree things is just making sure like I can park in a responsible way. Um, this is another thing that it kind of defines the eights and the uh, exposure of this area based on that. And then it also shows the general aspects. Um, once again, plugging the avalanche forecast in a place you can see it. Um, it pulls in the, this is the, I think this is the nearest snowtail station. Yeah. The nearest snowtail station to Kendall mountain. So giving that dynamic information. And then you have photos. Um, and then once you're here too, you have this upper section that'll show you your descents, your approaches and your exits. I don't think Kendall Mountain has an exit, but um, so descents, like if we're saying like, you know, what are my options here? You can view that. So Coyote's Tooth, you click it and it'll highlight the route. Um, Idaho Gulch, that's the one that goes right down the middle. And then Rabbit Ears, um, this is the one that kind of goes through that little shoot, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, you can kind of pick which route you want based on that. Um, and then once you click in these two, it'll give you more guidebook style information. So focuses in on the line, gives you a little written description of, you know, what you can expect from this descent. Um, and then it'll show you some route details. So this is just the downhill section. So how far is that? How much elevation are we losing as we're going there? Um, what is the maximum slope? And then you have like an elevation profile here that'll show you just kind of like what you're getting into. Again, showing you the train details, avalanche forecasts, snow conditions, all that stuff there. And then there's some photos as well that are pulled from the guidebook. Um, and then, yeah, if you go back here, this one shares an approach. I think the rabbit ears or no, the summit, Kendall summit. So this would be the one we'd want to take up. So yeah, once you're here, like this can give you another idea of, of the of the challenging part, which is the climb to the top of it. Um, so how much elevation are we going to gain? Um, you know, what is our max elevation? 
how many miles is it? Um, and then you can see your elevation profile here, right? So like starts pretty mellow through town, and then it starts climbing where you get this red part right here is where it's very steep if you're getting to the summit. So this is great. Like I, I love using the, the guidebook data um, just to help plan routes and, and to get better beta. Um, so sweet, that's the guidebook stuff. Um, we also have a ton of tools. If you go over to this right-hand side, um, there's a variety of things that help you customize your maps. Like once you get this information from the Beacon Guidebook stuff, you're going to have to make your own decisions based on the content that's in there. So um, I always use this to mark like exactly where I want to go um, and make sure that like I'm very clear with like what I want to achieve when I'm out there. So I'm going to go over here just because I can kind of put around um, and show you a little closer. So this right here is our route builder. So the thing that this thing does well is it kind of snaps to terrain. So if you're saying we're going to start in town and we're going to go down this road, it'll kind of just like snap to this nearest line that we have. Even as you're kind of going up peaks, as you can see I'm actually kind of doing it faster by going up this way. And that kind of eliminates just the need for like redundant clicking and trying to follow a trail if that's what you want to do. Um, this is really helpful, especially on hiking trails when you're planning like backpacking routes and stuff. Um, and then once you have your line, um, you can change your route color, you make it blue. You can change your style. Do you like dashes better? Do you like the line thicker or thinner? Um, you can put notes. So if you want to like put something here to remember it by, um, you can do that. And then you can also add to folders. As you continue to like build out stuff, um, it's becoming more and more important for me to put everything in folders so it's neatly stored. Um, so I'm just gonna put Silverton here. And that if you do a good job of putting things in folders as well, it makes it a lot easier to share that with your friends. So um, I'll show that in a second. So this one, just make sure you hit save because I almost forgot that. Um, we also have a line tool. So like I use this sometimes for plotting routes. Um, and I'll also use it for um, just seeing like how high is it to the top of this mountain, right? Or like how far is this? Or you know how far am I for, from water? Can I camp here? I do that sometimes too. Um, same idea, just point to point, you can draw a line. If you want to draw like a couple lines, um, you, know, you can do that as well. And then you can change the colors, you can change the weights, you can add them to your folders, et cetera. And then once you hit save, it'll show you all, all that information. So like, you know, what is your total length? What's the total elevation gain? What's the total elevation loss of that doodle I just did? Um, and then you can kind of trace it around as you go. Um, the other one, we have this area shape tool. Um, so same idea, but it will highlight an area and show you like, you know, what is the total? Um, okay, I can just show this. Yeah, here it is. So it's 21 acres on the inside of this. And then it shows you like the distance on all these surrounding sides. Um, I use this a lot when I'm backcountry skiing. If you're kind of marking like we're going to ride this bowl and like you can kind of highlight it. Or if you're saying we're going to stay off of this terrain, I, I often will use this tool to actually close out terrain as well. So I'm going to do a close out for this one. We're going to make it red and scary. Um, and yeah, you can also, I haven't been doing this, but you can name everything. That's also pretty important for organization which I need to get better at. It's a New Year's resolution. <laughs> um, and then the other really important one that we have is, is waypoints. So this is one of my favorite things. Um, I have way too many waypoints in my life, but um, we'll do save. So this is the top of Kendall Mountain. We'll just click and drag this guy back over here. So yeah, if you want to just mark Kendall Mountain, um, there's actually a ton of different waypoints we have in the app here. So you can see these are the 70 plus waypoints I was talking about. There's geysers and hot springs and houses and logs. And I think there's even Sasquatch in here somewhere. Here he is. So Sasquatch, one of my favorites. And you can change your color as well. So, um, you know, do you want to be red? Do you want to be black? You can put notes being like, I saw Sasquatch here. And then you can also add photos. So sometimes like, I will take photos off of my phone because um, you can do this on the app as well. Um, if I'm like out in the thing and you you like look up at a mountain, you're like, okay, this is the view when you're at this waypoint. Um, and it can give you like a better perspective of like, next time I'm here, this is what I'm going to remember when I'm here. So 
Um, pretty awesome feature. Add this one to our folder too. And then once you have all this content, um, where you can access it in the future is this My Content section on the left. So you click in here um, and then it will open up all of your content. So this is the folder we created. But if you do have stuff outside of the folder, it'll all live here. So routes, lines, areas, tracks, waypoints. So this is the folder we created. Um, so if I want to share it, um, what's giving me a no? I think it's this one. Okay. So yeah, like if you want to share like any of these two, it's super easy. Like my folder, okay, here it is. Yeah, you just hit the share button right here. And once you hit this, um, it'll give you all of these different things and you can hit share. And once you do that, it'll create a link. Um, and then once you have this link, you can send it to your friends. And if your friends have Onyx Backcountry, it opens it up right on their phone um, and will import all of their files um, without needing to move GPX files or anything like that around. So this is super useful for getting your, your crew on the same plan um, with your tour. And I'm just gonna go out of here. So two other things, two or three other things I want to show is um, is uh, how to toggle on the 3D and between your different map layers. So if you're down here in this bottom corner, this is how you can toggle on topo, um, satellite, hybrid, or topo. So hybrid being a satellite overlay with topo lines, and then satellite here. And to switch between 2D and 3D, you can toggle here. And um, as you're in 3D, when you're on your computer, you hold down the control button. And then when you click, you can like rotate, you can fly around, you can pan, and you can just get a really good perspective of the area that you're recreating in. And the last thing I want to show is, um, is this uh, weather widget. So if you click here, it'll open up your weather and it'll tell you um, what the weather should be like in very specific locations. So um, this is the current weather, this is your current wind, um, your snowfall, et cetera, your sunrise, your sunset, and then your extended forecast, your hourly forecast, um, and then your moon phases. And you can see those all up here too, which will open up like a, a dedicated card for each of these. All right. So that's kind of just the 101. Um, those are the top features that I like to use when I'm in the Onyx Backcountry app. Um, and then Josh, um, if you'd like to walk us through a day in the San Juans and kind of get a little tour plan figured out, um, I would love to kick it over to you. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay. So screen share with, oh, can I share my screen? Uh, yeah. There we go. Rad. Okay, yes, can, can you see all see it. my screen? Can you see me? Yep, can see it. Killer. Um, so a little background on the Onyx app with the beacon, not that y'all need more of that. Uh, so I used to own and operate a ski guide service out of Silverton and Andy Sobic, the, the publisher from Beacon Guidebooks reached out, we went to college together and he had put together a beacon guidebook for Crested Butte and reached out and was like, hey, you're doing a bunch of ski guiding and AVI courses around Red Mountain Pass. Would you be willing to put together a guidebook? And we basically took the run list of a bunch of the stuff we were guiding and doing AVI courses on um, around Silverton. And that's where we came up with the, the guidebook. Um, so it was myself and then a bunch of the other guides helped verify and go through um, a bunch of the stuff we were doing which is rad. Uh, in terms of starting the day, um, following along a chapter book, jumping into chapter seven is really tricky to do to pick up the characters. It's way easier to follow along from the beginning of the season. So I typically go to cake in the morning, which uh, I was told I'm the only person who says cake. So y'all should just start using cake, Colorado Avalanche Information Center. And I check the AVI forecast and there is the AVI app layer on um, Onyx for the AVI forecast, which is a great start, but I like to go straight to 
the website and figure out what's going on. The forecast says it's going to drop tomorrow, and I think it's going to drop even more on Saturday. And I read through here, figure out what my problems are. I want to know what my problems are because that's going to help me choose terrain that's appropriate for those problems, i.e. a persistence lab. I'm going to give a much wider berth or margin of error than, say, a storm slab or wind slab that's much more contained by terrain. In addition to just going through the AVI forecast with the problems, the discussion, and the weather, I like to do a couple other kind of additional steps to give me more information about those characters. So this is great info, but from the top of my AVI forecast page, I like to go to the weather stations and I scroll down all the way to the Northern San Juans and I check a few of these weather stations and I'm pretty specific about the weather stations I check. They're not popping up right now, but typically I check the Swamp Angel study plot, the Kendall and the Putney. And the Swamp Angel study plot tends to give the most accurate snow totals for what's going on right on top of red. And we're gonna go here. That's actually from the Center for Snow and Avalanche Studies. It's their weather station. And I can go to the Swamp Angel study plot and precip either by hours or by day, which is fine. And then if we scroll to the bottom, here's 2023. They do it by numerical days of the year. And we can see exactly how much snow total they have gotten over the past few days. So 1.9 meters. 1.5 meters. So they've gotten, you know, several feet over the past several days. So I tend to check Swamp Angel for snow totals. Then I check Putney for in-terrain weather. The Putney weather station is kind of right up here. It says Putney approach. And that's going to tell me the weather that's going on right exactly where I'm probably going skiing, winds and on the ground temps. And then the last one I like to check is the Kendall weather station which again, typically I'm finding on here, Kendall Mountain. And that gives the exact temps and winds for what's going on on Kendall, which is kind of an above feature weather station. So first thing I do is check the report. Then I check my weather stations. And then I check my observations every day. And you can just go to observations, view field reports. And this page will pop up. And then I just go to the Northern San Juan. And I want to see what other people are seeing. These are non-reported or non-official reports. Some of them are from heli traps. Some of them are from random people skiing. Some of them have a ton of data and some of them might not. And I go through each one and I just want to see where things are failing. Where are the avalanche problems going and how big are they going? And I dig through those. Uh, and that's every day to start my tour. Typically, whether I'm going out or not. Once I've looked at the AVI report, the weather stations, and the field reports, then I start figuring out my tour. And unless it's an objective-based tour, like we're going to go ski the coin slot, or we're going to go ski the elevator shaft on the Sultan, objective-based versus fun-based, if it's a fun-based tour, I typically like to ski good snow and I don't really care where it is. I just want to go find good snow. Oftentimes that good snow is near and below tree line on north facing aspects. So that's what I'm going to do to start picking my tour. I like using the slope opacity layer and I turn it way down because I don't want it to be overwhelming. To just give you an idea of how steep stuff is. And then I might start drawing in a tour and figuring out my linkable tour. I'm not a big fan of up and down tours. I'd way rather have a tour that links up terrain. One of the cool things about Onyx, if you're not from the area, is the photos in there. I love being able to click on the different sections. Sorry, slow internet. and get some ideas from the pictures of the terrain that I'm going into. So for tomorrow, given that it's blinking red right now, 
but tomorrow it's going to go down to considerable. Natural is possible, humans likely. Uh, after a big storm, looking at our snow totals, knowing that we've gotten, you know, upwards of half a meter, so foot and a half, two feet of snow at Swamp Angel over the past several days. I might not be willing to get into too crazy of terrain. So, you know, Souths might ski really good with two feet of fresh snow, and I don't want overhanging hazards. So I don't want anything glowing brown or purple or red above me or blue, whatever these colors are up here. I might want to stick to terrain that's a little mellower. But I like to just plan out and think around drawing in stuff. So using the line feature, I'm going to pick a different line than what's on here because we're going to pretend that the routes aren't in there already. So I'll go in, we'll do red, that's fine. We'll do dotted, that's fine. And then maybe I just start at the top of the pass. Coming in, I am worried a little bit about overhead hazards, so maybe I'd stay away from those cliffs right above me. And you can use that snap to feature or you can just draw it in. I want to go up low angle terrain. I might be willing to ski down steeper terrain, but that doesn't mean I really want to go up it. So I'm just going to tic tac back and forth this super mellow terrain. I figure I could probably get more runs in if I stick to lower angle mellow terrain on the way up. With no overhead hazard. I'm a huge fan of a warm up lap, and I really think that that south facing or southeast facing, or sorry, southwest facing terrain tomorrow is going to ski really good. So I'm going to connect it all the way back down to here for a warm up lap. Go back up, stick in the low angle terrain, reach the top. You should always try to ski off the top of something. That makes you a ski mountaineer. If you only ski from halfway, you're just a skier. So we'll go to there. That's legit science, Matt. Um, and maybe tomorrow I'm willing to get into some of this green terrain that's like 25-ish degrees. So maybe we ski straight down there, still avoiding any overhead terrain. So I'm not getting underneath this like red stuff here that's steeper. I'm not getting underneath that that's steeper. That was a great run. So I'd like to go do it again. We'll just tic tac back up and forth. Gain that bench. Ski back down. That was really fun. We're doing some terrain progression. Maybe throughout the day, we've decided that while we agree with the forecast, we haven't seen any signs of instability. There's no cracking, there's no whooping. It's been several days since the storm. We do a couple different tests and we're not finding any indicators of propagation. So maybe I'm willing to like eke up over here. Ski back down to the middle of the gulch. Pop on the road. and ski out. I have some buddies in Silverton, so they ran a shuttle for us. We parked at the top of the pass, which is 11,075 feet. And we're gonna end down here at 10,200 feet. So we get like a free thousand feet. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at how that tour is. So about six miles, 2,800 feet of up, 3,500 feet of down. That sounds like a pretty rad tour for the day um, with a ton of options. If we were to get to the top of here at the saddle and not like it, we can totally bail back to red. We can bail down here. I like tours that if I go to Matt and I'm like, hey Matt, here's a piece of trace Lechos cake and here's a piece of moldy bread. Which one do you want? Matt, which one do you want? Uh, trace Lechos. To totally, me too, man. And same thing with skiing. 
if me and Mac are out on a tour and I'm like, hey, we can either ski the Narnar shot or we can walk down the skin track, of course I want to ski the good shot. Like everyone wants to ski the good shot. But if I can be like, hey, Matt, here's some Trace Leches cake. Here's a chocolate sundae. Here's a banana split. Here's a molten brownie. And here's a two pound bag of gummy worms. Which one do you want? Suddenly you're like, wow, they all look like good choices. And um, by putting together a tour with a bunch of options, you're more likely to pick the good choices as well and the safe choices. And this tour has a bunch of that. I am a little concerned. I've heard some bad stuff lately about some landowners over here um, getting really aggro on terrain that they think they own. So maybe I go into here and I go down to private landowners and I just make sure Yeah, look at that. There's a bunch of names up here, but for the most part, our tour avoids skiing over the names that I don't want to be near. There's a bunch of other ones in here, but these are like random old unnamed ones. So I'm not worried about that, which is great. Cool. So I can turn that off. Um, we can come in here. Maybe we've decided that's a good slope angle tour. Like we're, we're comfortable with... Uh, the pitches that we're skiing. I can come in and turn my slope aspect on. And look at my aspects. Matt was showing the little compass rows before. So I'm like, sweet. On the way up in the morning, I like, I'm an early riser. I'm going to make my partners meet me in Silverton at the Coffee Bear at 6.30 in the morning. I'm probably banging on the door at the coffee bear at like 6.15 and Holly and Sophie are getting super upset with me that we're banging on the door early, as are my partners because they don't like to go early. But uh, whatever, we're going up early. So I'm not worried about uh, early lap on south faces because it's still cold out. But as the day warms up, those south faces start building a crust and I'm like, sweet, let's dip over down some north. Cool, the north face or that east face is a little cooler and still skiing pretty good. And then we're going either, well, shoot, the south's warmed up too much. I want to avoid it. Let's go back to the north. Or maybe the south didn't warm up at all and they're still skiing great. These south faces over here can ski phenomenal um, on a cold day. And if we were to go to either our weather here, and our forecast or go to our weather here. Tomorrow, it's only gonna be 12 degrees out. It's not gonna be that hot. Maybe I'm not that worried about south heating up and I can do that all within the app. You know, here's your hourly forecast. It's getting colder overnight, rad, good freeze. Um, so it's easy to just bop around in here. I'm still using my other apps or my other websites like Cake, and Swamp Angel, but uh, having the availability to bop around in here works really well. Um, and then can I just go back and turn on our tours and see what else is in here. So like, oh, look at that upper prospect. Let's see, done. Oh, sweet. So that's some of the terrain we were looking at that I was looking at coming down. And I'm like, cool, totally avoiding overhanging hazard here. Looks like some rad gladed trees here. Looks like some rad terrain here. Um, so it just makes it easy to bebop around, which I really like. And then when I'm like, Matt, I think this is it, man. This is the money tour. Six miles, 3,000 feet. You might be puking blood at the end of the day, but you should have signed up to ski with somebody else. I can click on my tour. We're going to add it to a folder. The webinar ski folder. Link added to the folder. And then I can come in and I can share it. And you can pretty slick. Plop, plop that in the chat. Um, yeah. And everybody can see it. Yeah. Might be host and panelists. But... We're all here for the science. I love it. Uh, <laughs> you might have to reshare it. I can share to host and panelists. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just put it to me. Yeah. And... Um, 
So I think it's a rad starting point uh, for someone who's not familiar with the Silverton zone, you know, um, Washington Pass, they close in the winter and it's snowmobile access. And Teton Pass has a backcountry, you know, staircase and backcountry bump run. Berthoud Pass and Loveland Pass, super crowded. Um, I get really grumpy on Red Mountain Pass when I see like five other cars at the trailhead. Uh, it is, it's just not that crowded. I know I'm telling everyone in the chat this, but the nine of you aren't going to make a big difference. And there's just so much terrain here. Um, and really linkable tours going up and over that way is a killer tour. Another tour we could do. We want to go in here. Turn off slope aspect, turn off the avalanche forecast. Sure. We'll leave slope angle on. Let's click this and hide on the map, make it a little less confusing. Another really cool tour, maybe we come in here. Coming up the road cut, we're just following the tours that are in here. And again, these are just the tours that we were happen to be guiding a bunch. Um, a lot of them have official names like the cemetery where we're headed that are just CDOT named slide path. And a lot of them, we were just tired of being like, hey, let's go to the run to the left of the other run by the burning bush. That's like two right of the gully. So we just started naming stuff and it stuck. Um, again, ski off the top of something if you can. Looks like pretty low angle all the way to here. It's getting a little steeper all the way to the cemetery. If that doesn't work for you and you don't want to drop in, you could easily come back up and ski back out low angle terrain. Or you could drop all the way down. Okay, if we save that one. So three miles with 1,600 feet of up and 2,500 feet of down. By utilizing the pass, um, you can just create some really rad tours. Uh, that's a good one. And that avoided terrain all but the end of it. Um, that's another sweet. really good. Oh, yeah. Do you want to show us, show us that one? Like, I, I would love to see that last one you just put, put up in 3D. So, like, maybe, yeah. like, scroll over there. Yeah. And then hit control. And then like, this is like one thing too. And when, when someone's like, all right, this is the mission. Yeah, put on satellite too. And then if you hold control, you can kind of like pan around and, and take a look, yep. especially that cemetery shoot. So it's like sweet. Cause like sometimes from the topo, like you're like, that isn't an obvious avalanche oh. path, but it sure is when you're sitting on the road. So like. Well, close that. <laughs> just went to space yeah yeah it's slow that's no, all good i threw off your groove so you can see the massive computer computing power that's being done by these computers to render these 3d maps <laughs> um but we can click on the yeah, there it is right? So cemetery and scroll down and there's our approaches. Oh, cause I'm clicked on approach. Matt, you might have to help me if I'm drowning here. No, it's all good. It's, cause yeah, this, I highlighted looks... right over. No, it's cause I highlighted right over it. There we go. I just couldn't oh, that's, click that's it. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I highlighted right over it. Yeah, so there's, there's the, the cemetery. So we came up here and we're going to pop down that, which is a CDOT named slide path. So tons of low angle fun terrain up here, very linkable in here. And by coming in from the top, I don't know. by coming in from the top, you drive way better than I do, Matt. Uh, <laughs> we've limited our exposure on the way up and then we're only going on it on the way down. We're not, um, exposing ourselves a lot of people tic tac up this which just makes me uncomfortable tic tacking right up it and why not get the free extra 800 feet if you can come in from the top 
absolutely. Well, um, Josh, so that's a like, great one. Oh yeah, thanks. go ahead. I think like I think that's that's a perfect walkthrough for like two of these great zones in the San Juans. Um, I guess just in the interest of time, like I can switch to like the what you need to do before you get into the field. Um, if that's good with you. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, sweet. Yeah, like these lines, cemetery. I have not yet ridden that one, but like cemetery is awesome. That's that. I think that one's on my spring my spring objective list for sure. And if we turn off, you know, if we go back to two D and topo, uh, the cemetery one's a great one. There it is. Um, and if you really want to link it up and get your bang for your buck. So you start up here on uh, red, that's 11,075 feet. You top out somewhere up here, which doesn't have a name. We just named it Fubar. Ski down and then do a quick lap on either Chattanooga East, which would be like Sam's or one of the Chattanooga North. And that turns your day into like a 4,500 foot day, totally utilizing the pass for an extra free, for free mileage. Oh, that's awesome. That's the stash right there. I mean, that's a yeah, great link up. That's definitely like to it. Like a really good thing is like these guidebook routes are kind of like a, a starting point, right? Like there's always these, these other lines and, and, and stashes that like you can find for yourself, like using some of these approaches and, and just kind of like determining your own descent um, after getting that beta there. Yeah. Um, yeah. These lines are great. Yeah. Uh, and with a little time spent on the app, for the web um you can put together some really rad tours uh and not just follow the tracks up into the tracked out you know some of these zones over here um tend to get pretty tracked out uh so just a little bit of time and a couple more hundred yards and you're off the beaten path that's awesome well sweet yeah we've been spending a lot of time in the uh in the web map here um but I wanted to show just like, you know, we, we just put, we just looked at maps for a while. Um, we've made a tour plan. So how do we, how do I get that tour that he just created on my phone? Um, and then what should I do to make sure that my phone is ready for when I'm out of service on Red Mountain Pass? Um, so I'm going to share my screen. I think I'm, um, I can't seem to get this thing to share on my Zoom here today. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, so instead, I'll show you the, the backup method. Um, so. I apologize for that, but one second, I'll share around here. So here's here's another good way to do it. Um, I'm sorry about this. I wish I could share with my phone, but my computer is just not cooperating at seven o'clock. Um, so can you can see my screen now. Yep. So Josh sent me this link. This is what it looks like when you click it, right? So this is the one line um, that he shared. Um, oh, this link was before he built that second one. So you know, it's got his face there. It's got his name and we add it. So once we add it, this gets added to my routes as well. So now I can see this. Um, you can't edit um, somebody else's lines um, because it's it's kind of owned by them. Um, and if you ever want to delete that line, you can do that here. But here is the tour plan. Um, and one other way, like before you go out into the backcountry, like you have to make sure you download your maps for offline use. Um, so that's one step that you need to make sure that you're doing. Um, and there's a way that you can do it on the computer that will make it easier for you to do it once you get on your phone. But you have to do this on your phone. So over here on this left-hand side, there's this offline maps button. And if you click this, you can say new offline map. And then, yeah, we're going to go with this. Um, here we go. We're going to make sure like this whole area is just like, is totally downloaded. Um, and like, you know, if you want to get, um, you know, a higher resolution, you can do that this way. Um, and then like, you know, also like you might want to stitch a couple of these together if you're going to be spending a whole weekend in the San Juans and just download the whole area before you go offline. Um, so I'm just going to call this one uh, Red Mountain. And you hit save. So once you hit save here, like you get this big warning. So make sure you heed this warning. Um, it creates an area, but it doesn't save it to your computer and it doesn't save it to your phone. So what this does is once you go into your phone, 
and you try to download um, your offline map, like it'll actually be waiting for you there. I wish I would could show you right now. Um, in the bottom, um, in the bottom bar. Let's see, can you see my screen? No, just disappearing. So, and yeah, in the bottom bar, there's a there's one that says offline maps. You click that, and then you'll see that map show up as whatever you named it. And then there's a green circle, or like I think it actually will be a different colored circle. Um, but you click that, and then that'll say like, hey, we mapped out where we want to download on the computer. And you just have to do a one button push to get it to work on your phone. So um, apologize for the technical difficulties. I usually like showing that most critical step um, before we go. So, um, so yeah, you do okay, got it. Cool, so um, that concludes our kind of walkthrough. So um, once again, thanks everybody for joining. Um, if you haven't taken advantage of this 20% off discount, I'll flash this for you guys one more time. Um, so here it is. And then San Juan's expeditions, once again, um, they know San, the San Juan's better than anybody else. Um, if you're looking to do uh, an awesome adventure, if you're looking to have a guaranteed good time or guaranteed suffer fest, I guess it's up to you on what you want to do. Um, give these guys a call. And there's their information. Not a suffer uh, fest. It's not a suffer fest. <laughs> Just big deal. Uh, yeah, exactly. So um, also we're giving away 25 Onyx Backcountry hats tonight. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to scan this QR code, it's a simple form. Um, and we're going to give 25 of you hats. So uh, check that out. And then we also have a cool giveaway going on right now. Um, we call it the Pledge to Check the Avalanche for Forecast Giveaway. Um, basically, um, you log in with your Onyx account on this page that you can scan with this QR code here. And then you pledge to make sure it, it's a basically a pledge to check the avalanche forecast before heading out in backcountry um, and doing that simple step that can help save your life and, and make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into before you head out into the backcountry. Um, because Cake or CIC knows more about the what's going on in the backcountry than you do. Um, so reading their reports religiously is, is one of the most important things you can do to stay safe. And if you take the pledge, um, you're entered in for a chance to win. Um, gear from BCA, Weston, Wonder Alpine, Mountain Flow Eco X, 57 Hours, and Sierra Nevada. So take that pledge. All right. And then we have QA. Um, do you have any questions coming in? Okay. I'm getting a question about the Opus Zone Hut. Um, so, yeah, that one we actually have. Let's see. I'll kick over. That's one of the beacon routes, so I'll just show flash that really quick. Um, I'm just going to search for it. So yeah, Opus. So we have it just labeled as the hut zone. Oh, hut zone. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'll do it this way. We'll go discover Silverton zones. Where is it? The hut zone. Hut zone. So once you're in here, you can just putt around and look for it, or I think it would be an approach, right? Yeah. So there's an approach, and then there's a ton of lines in that zone, or a ton of stuff in that zone. Okay, I'll look at it, because we were looking at this one earlier. So is it, I forget where it is. Your cursor is right over it. Oh, okay. So uh, it says hut oh. zone, the Opus hut, is it the, oops. So zoom back out a little bit. Okay. The Opus Hut is kind of right at the base of that Piper Charlie's run. Piper Charles. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hut approach. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's over in this area, right? Yep. Sweet. Yeah. And like, you know, I think the the coordinates for where it's actually located are pretty easy to find. Um, if you pop those into um, the search bar up top, it'll um, pull that exact location up and you can actually mark it with a waypoint. So that's a great way to use like Onyx to plan a hut trip. Um, this one actually has some pretty good beta on not only how to get to the hut, but um, what to ski while you're there. Um, cool. Josh, would you got any battery management tips for the gold? Yeah, totally. So I typically use my phone uh, only when I'm looking at it. So I turn it off 
when I'm not looking at it. I know Onyx can track. Um, it seems that the tracking apps on the phone suck a lot of battery. So I tend to not track on my phone, uh, which I know is a bummer when you're trying to see where you're going. Um, but I leave it off and then I turn it on, find out where I'm at, look at the map, check it out for five, 10 minutes and then turn it back off. And if I do that, I tend to be able to get like three days and two nights of power out of it. And I like to watch movies on my phone in my tent and it still works. And then I bring um, a little chapstick size anchor battery for one full charge and that covers me as well. But inside pocket and then leave it off. I, I Whether it's Onyx or Strava or whatever you're tracking with, I, I tend to not track on my phone because um, it just uses a lot of battery. Nice. Yeah. I think that's, that's good advice. And like the really, really small battery packs are great too, because they can get your phone charged, even if it's just one time or half a charge, um, and not add a ton of weight to your, to your kit. <laughs> um, we had another question on here about sharing with non Onyx users. So I'm going to go back over to my, my pit of despair over here with these, uh, these different tools that I have hazardly marked up here. So, um, Here's a cool way, like if you go over to my content, um, which is over here, and then you hit this select button, you can actually start like clicking around on like, okay, I wanna share this guy, and I wanna share this guy, and I wanna share this guy. Um, and you can select like the handful of things you wanna share. Um, and then you can see here, if you click this share button, this will open up the link style that we've been sh we've been showing throughout the webinar where it's, hey, you create a link, share with the Onyx user, goes right to their phone, great. Um, but we also have this export function right here. So if you click this, it'll give you the option to create a GPX or a KML file with those shapes. Um, so you can you know, save them directly to your computer um, and then you can email them. Um, I've even gotten like AirDrop to work a couple of times when you don't have cell service at the trailhead. So um, that really makes it easy to share with people who are using different apps, um, as well as, you know, even if you just want to like back up all of your stuff. Um, and then, yeah, if, the other way around, if you have a friend that's planning in a different app and you want to pull that information into your app, if you get a GPX file from them, you go to this My Content section and then hit this Import button. And then you can drag a KML or GPX file or select it um, from your computer in your drive as well. And then once you're in there, um, you can also, if you check this box, it'll import that into a new folder. So um, again, with the organization and my obsession with it, like clicking that box, someone sends me a GPX file with a hundred sometimes pins in it. Um, <laughs> but if I hit that, it'll, it'll make it all organized. So I don't need to go and put them in there later. Um, and yeah, um, GPX files also can be imported and exported on mobile devices as well. So um, no matter what device you're on, um, there is a path to doing that. And then I think that's all the pretty basic questions. Has anybody got any last minute ones? Oh yeah, so this is a good one. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, of CalTopo and Gaia and and moving pins in or out, we're working on like a, a larger bulk um, import feature, but. What I just showed is another way you can accomplish that. Um, so you can Im import or export from different things and move them over. Um, and we're working on one that like will be able to handle like, you know, the years of day that you may have on different apps or whatever too, if you're trying to move a lot. All right, we got one last one. Um, any tips on lines or tours near Hayden Lodge? Yeah. Hay yeah. I know exactly where Hayden Lodge is. Um, I got... I mean, so let's uh, go into here, turn that off. Do you want to share your screen? Oh, yeah, totally. I got to share my screen. You can't see what I'm doing. Cool. Sorry. I was like, I don't, I actually don't know where Hayden Lodge is. So I'm excited for this one. Um, so we'll turn this one off too. Hide on map. So Hayden Lodge is, and let's just turn off slope angle for a minute just to make it easier to see. 
Uh, Hayden Lodge is right back here over Richmond Pass, right under Mount Hayden, which is where the name comes from. And the owner proprietor, Eric, used to be a, a executive chef at a fancy restaurant and got out of that and built up this lodge on an old mining claim. And he lives there and he cooks and he is awesome. Uh, is a phenomenal chef, is the first person to live back there in that terrain year round in probably a hundred years. And he tours in. So all the food that you eat at the lodge, uh, he schleps in this ginormous backpack with his dog on skis and he brings it in every couple of days and cooks fresh stuff. Nothing super fancy, but amazing fresh food. Um, and yeah, I, uh, there's a ton of lines near the Hayden Lodge. Um, happy to share a few of them. I can't give all of them away. You got to come on a trip with me at the Hayden Lodge. But yeah, I mean, these are all fun lines around the lodge. Uh, you can come in from Camp Bird. Is probably what most people do coming in from your which has some serious overhead hazard, but there's not a lot of navigation because you're just on the road. Um, and it's kind of easy to mitigate the overhead hazard with some spacing. The preferred way that I think is a little more fun and adventurous, but takes some more navigation and is a little more committing is to park on red and to go up this ridge here, which is called Spirit Ridge. And then you top out here and then you can ski that blue line down to the lodge, which is one of my lines. And if we were to go back and turn on slope angle shading, you can see that going up the bulk of the ridge, you're on a ridge and there's steep stuff on either side, but it's pretty easy to mitigate the risk because you're on a ridge. Uh, it does get steep up here. You know, there's really no way to avoid the steep up here. But once you're on top, you're kind of skiing relatively like fun, low angle, looking at the colors, 30-ish degree terrain, 20 to 30 degree terrain, all the way down to the lodge. And it does take some serious navigation in terms of um, not having big overhead hazard above you, um, but there's some phenomenal terrain around by the lodge. I can share a couple of these lines. How do I do that? We got to click a line. Which one did I just click um, on Main Street? Go, go to my, my con. If you want to just click a couple of these and share them yeah. with the group, um, go to my content and then hit that select button that's right under the words my content. Yeah. Well, we yeah, can now, now you can, now you can click whatever ones you want to share. Sure. How about you can we click them on the right? map or you can click them in your, uh, in your Rich thing like you're doing. It. Um, Main Street's a really good one. Uh, Chicago Shoulder and how about TA? I'm giving away too many. This is this is for the new guidebook you're working on, right? Uh, yeah, Andy and I have been talking. Um, we'll go with that. So how about we go with that? So TA Descent, Lightning Bolt Coolar. Lightning Bolt Coolar is a really cool one. Um, that drops you down off Chicago Peak into Telluride. Um, Chicago Shoulder is great terrain. Main Street is uh, some treed terrain right near the hut. It's kind of some of this stuff right down here. Um, Richmond Spirit is going up, route into the Hayden. Yeah, let's add those to the folder. Let's add them to the webinar NAR folder, add it to the folder, and then... Yeah, click that web webinar NAR, share copy, go to here, and where did my, uh, where's the chat? Oh, sometimes it kind of disappears. Um, yeah, I have to stop screen sharing. There, there we you go. go, here's the chat. Okay, um, but who asked that question? Gregory? Okay, Gregory, here's some lines for you uh, for the Hayden Lodge. We should do a trip together. And if you're not nice in the skin track, we'll unshare them from you. How's that? But there's a bunch to get you started. Does that work for you? Um, let's see. I don't see it in the chat. Is it, is it in there? So it went from me to Onyx Maps. So who, here, we'll try it here. Okay. There we go. There so it, it is. Went to either, yeah, there you go. Joe, can you share that with the rest of the gang? Cool. Um, um, sweet. 
So terrain repeats. Uh, if you go to the Tetons, it's all like jagged, gnarly peaks. You go to the Northwest, it's all the volcanoes, Baker, Shucks, and, you know, the cool thing we have around here um, is basin skiing. So if you, you know, go to um, any of these zones, turn that off, turn that off. Any of these zones, you tend to have big basins. So you have access to every aspect of the compass. You know, you turn on your, your compass and you have as every aspect. And then you have above, near, and below tree line, all from a single starting point, which is pretty slick. Um, you're not just like going up an east face and then down an east face, and that's your only option. Um, you're just wrapping the compass, which lets you, you know, play with the compass in terms of temperatures during the day, in terms of the problems that you're worried about, persistence labs on the north, loose sweat on the south, whatever it might be. Um, and once you get comfortable kind of playing in those basins, you can, I mean, there's, three lifetimes worth of touring there or all over here. That's awesome. All right. I think we're out of time here, Josh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your passion and your Intel on the San Juans with all of us today. Um, I got to get down there this spring and get some tours in with you. So yeah, I, come I look forward to me. it. Greg, <laughs> tell Eric, I say hi when you go to the Hayden Lodge. He's rad. Um, make sure you bring your bathing suit. Make sure you bring earplugs. And the hot tub uh, maybe fits two people, depending on who you're comfortable with. I would not get in the hot tub with Matt. It's a pretty tiny hot tub. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Um, tune in to future webinars. We're doing a lot of these um, and sharing information on different areas, how to use the Onyx map, you know, Onyx maps the fullest and um, so on. So stay tuned. We'll catch you next time. And thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank you all, everyone. It was rad. Keep in touch. Ski fast and take chances, though. <laughs>